Welcome back to Sunday Vibes, everybody at home. Patrick Van Straten is still in Sri Lanka doing bits on beaches, according to his Instagram. Doogie Critchley has filled in today. Uh, the first question comes from Meme King, and he says, if you had to buy four players to be the spinier side, so a goalkeeper, a central defender, a central midfielder, and a striker, yeah. And they've got to be there for eight years. The next eight years, which is a bit of a weird eight date why range. Eight don't know what, Two why World eight. Cup cycles. Oh, right. Ooh, okay. There we go. Is that Not true? Sure. But anyway, uh, who would they be and why? So what would your future dream spine be? Should we do goalkeepers first? Goalkeepers first then, come and on. And then we're not going to talk about your whole shirt. You can if you want, mate, because it's fucking exceptional. Um, I'm undecided. Mm. It's certainly individual. Let's throw it Stumbled let's, straight let's, in from let's, the right. Let's throw it to do a you know pole. What? I think the, pole most, it. the most damning indictment was that McCubbin loved it. <laughs> yeah, McCubbin did love it. Then, so did McCullough. So did Adam McCullough. So. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, um, all right, goalkeepers then. Mm. Um, maybe still a pole. Did you call it a pole? A pill. A pill? Yeah. Hey, I'm spread out to that pole, I'd be you fucking hand. I reckon I'd go with... I call it a pole. <laughs> I'd go with Jan Oblak. To get back to the question. Okay. A goalkeeper who's kept more clean sheets, at least in his first 100 games, then he did concede goals. 59 clean sheets, mm. only conceded 54. At the peak of his powers, 25 years old, eight years had taken to 33. I think keepers, top, top keepers, begin to drop off around that age. So I, I don't think we need to worry about him, you know, uh, post 30, um, at least in the early stages. Mm. Uh, and he's making, at current, uh, five saves per game and keeping 0.6 clean sheets per game. But do, do you not think that's, that's quite hard to dispute? I feel, I feel like that is also helped by the fact he's an extremely well-drilled defensive unit of a side. They have aged this year, haven't they? Diego Godin, not the same sort of player. Juan Fran, not the same sort of player. But do you um, think if you stuck him in, let's say... In a more attack-minded side? Yeah. Well, like that, that it would do, or maybe even like... Unfortunately, yeah. that's pretty hard to quantify, but I have solid data that suggests he would be a good choice. Yeah, he oh, would be a good choice. For? I'd go De Gea. I don't even care about the age. I don't care about the age. I'd, oh, how old is he now? 27? Uh, something like that. But I'd rather have, like, even six years. I know that he wants it for eight, but I'd rather have six good years of De Gea than eight of any other keeper in the world. I think he, he's that good at the moment. It's not far off Man United's thinking at the moment, because he, apparently you're about to offer him a five-year contract. Fantastic. So. Offer him a 30-year contract. I don't care. <laughs> Give him whatever he wants. He's by far our best player. Until his son is old enough. To take he's over. just—he's so good. I'd—I'd I'd, I'd have the hair of any keeper in the world. I think behind the hair, I'd maybe go for Ter Stegen as as my as my. Uh, yeah, you've fallen in love with him this season. As my second option, I—I I actually didn't particularly. Is it the lid? I don't think I rated him massively last point. season. Um, but I just think this season, he, he, maybe it's just consistent football, and Valverde has given a bit of a confidence boost by by giving him that. Um, starting mm. spot every single week for Barcelona, but I just think he's the outstanding second best goalkeeper in the world right now with Manuel Neuer's injury. So I would obviously go to Haya, but second option I think mm. MTS. Yeah. Selling a 33-year-old Bravo for 25 million and then promoting Ter Stegen is mm. probably the best bit of goalkeeping business done in the last very wise, 10 years. Yep. Um, uh, I'd say just out of interest sake, I'd obviously agree to Haya and I'll black a better goalkeepers, but I'd go Donnarumma. Um, he's 19, Ooh. he's been in the AC Milan first team since he's 16. The experience he'll gain by the age of, what would he be then? He'll be 27. He'll, he'll have done everything uh, by that stage. He'll be Italy's number one, you'd expect that by the end of this summer with Buffon retiring. Um, I don't see him staying at AC Milan for the next uh, eight years. I think he'll definitely get a move, hopefully to the Premier League. I love seeing him in the Premier League. Uh, he's only making two saves per goal at the moment. Uh, and he's keeping a clean sheet in zero point every 0 0.3 games, mm. which isn't exceptional. But he's part of a shit side. He's part of a really <laughs> bad side who've struggled. Um, they won't, I don't think they'll be, uh, even in the Champions League next year, there's still a lot of work to be doing there. Um, so I'd go Donnarumma, I just think by then the amount of experience he's gained, he started at 16, it's quite crazy. Um, so yeah, I'd go Donnarumma, mm. if not Oblak. All right, defenders, centre us. Well, he's also a Mino Raiola client, isn't he? Oh, he's so, definitely getting a move. So move, we anticipate move a good huge up, well, so, move at some point. Uh, defenders, okay, caught me a little bit cold. Um, I think you're going for Davinson Sanchez. Hundred percent going so for Davinson Sanchez. Playing while, I, while I decide, Davin okay. Davinson Sanchez does the job of two defenders. He, he's so athletic. He is. He covers so much free space when the ball goes over his head. It allows Tottenham, I reckon, to get a good 15 yards further up the pitch with their defensive so line than any other side. Well. He is unbelievably athletic. I remember a few instances this season where the ball has gone over his head, an attacker has raced onto it, maybe 10 yards clear, and Davinson Sanchez has caught him up like yeah. that. 
knocked him off the ball because he's a huge frame. He's extremely gifted on the ball as well, I think. Really underrated how he starts a lot of Tottenham attacks. 21 years old. Um, I think it was brilliant business to bring him in in the summer. I personally, and I think a few of us actually at FD, we weren't convinced it was the right time for Davidson Sanchez to move and whether he'd be ready to start for a side mm -hmm. like Tottenham Hotspur at 21, coming from what was a fairly average Ajax side that had done well to get to a Europa League final. But he's proven everyone wrong. I think he's potentially like the top three defenders in the entire Premier League. Without potentially Alderweire next year as well, he's really going to keep this form going. So he'll be unbelievable. Main, he'll be their main defender. I think that's year. one of the biggest compliments you can say to him. Alderweire was out for, what, two, two and a half months and Tottenham didn't really notice any change. It was, uh, stepped up like it was nothing and Alderweire is arguably the best defender in the Premier League. Yeah, and he plays in a system where if they're not playing a, a back three, if they do revert to a four, he's, he's quite exposed. Easy, yeah. Uh, but he makes it look easy. Yeah, and he's put in a couple of formidable performances, hasn't he? Uh, I think I remember Tiff against Manchester United. And um, it's also not part of a defensive unit that you would say is sort of, OK, they're all fantastic defenders, but Pochettino doesn't line his side up as a defensive outfit. He doesn't go for a Simeone style, we are not going to concede and then we're going to score one more than you. Yeah, yeah. We, he's not, not in a Jose Mourinho side of, we'll just sit back and absorb all of your pressure. He plays in a, in a fluid, attacking Tottenham mm -hmm. Hotspur team. At the same time, they do get a little bit of protection from Dyer and Moussa Dembele, don't they? they yeah, they do. Oh, I suppose, I suppose that's true. But equally, I, I would argue that being as part of that central defensive unit, they have to look to play the ball so much further forward. Like, if you gave Chris Smalling that role, for instance, he oh. would really struggle because he can't pass anywhere but sideways in the U. Whereas the, the Tottenham... Uh, centre-backs have to split the line to find the more aggressive midfielders like Dele Alli and I think he does such a good job of that and defending. For me, he's the outstanding yeah. young defender in world football alongside Umtiti. So I think Umtiti would be my other though. option. Yeah. Can't wait to see Smalling at Everton next year. Uh, it's like great, isn't it? I know. <laughs> yeah, he definitely deserves a shout, doesn't he? Just for purely for the ways he's just into the Premier League. Um, and 30 million starts to look like an absolute bar, Yeah, him and Umtiti the best. Um, one of his old colleagues, we could we could go for, I've been thinking of young players I've had uh, De Ligt, obviously mm -hmm. he's sort of uh, been the poster boy for Ajax uh, this season, um, I think he's captain aside on a few occasions, yeah, he has. if uh, memory serves me correctly, uh, he looks like a hell of a prospect and Barcelona uh, were reportedly interested in him uh, to the tune of £40 million, um, who else do we have, Christensen and John Stones in the Premier League, uh, Christensen's only 21, two solid seasons in the Bundesliga, mm -hmm. He had a brilliant start to the season uh, at Chelsea, didn't he? Last sort of five or six game, games, his form has dipped, but as has those around him. Um, I like him, but I don't know whether I would take him in the spot. I don't know whether he's what he's looks good because Antonio Conte also lines his team up in an extremely tight well, defensive unit. It's hard to pick an exceptional defender from Chelsea, maybe yeah. as Azpilicueta, because mm. Chelsea, that team that won the title last year, is sort of more than the sum of their parts. Yeah, that's so. what I mean. Um, so with that in mind, I think I would go for someone you suggested earlier, Samuel Ntiti. He's been absolutely brilliant for Barcelona this season, um, both domestically and in the Champions League. Uh, he's had to play alongside uh, a sort of plethora of fullbacks, hasn't he? It has obviously been... Uh, it's, it's mainly been Nelson uh, Semedo mm. or, or Sergio Roberto, both good footballers, both quite attack-minded. Obviously, Roberto wants to play central midfield. Um, Jordi Alba has been a mainstay at left back, but every now and then you'll get maybe an Alexi Vidal or a, a Lucas Digne. Uh, and Gerard Pique likes to step out of defence, doesn't he? He takes quite a lot of risks. He breaks the lines, um, oh, and he makes, well last night he makes well. a lot of passes. Well, last night is an uh, indictment of that. He was. Why he was that far advanced when he tapped in that rebound no. uh, Madness. Is, is beyond me. But it so just, does what he wants, it just shows you that MTT is, is kind of trusted to be exposed. And I think he's only 23? Yeah, something like that. He's 24, 20, but 23, 24. 23, 24. 24. But you, you'd take him until he's 32, wouldn't you, even if he's 24? 100%. So I'd take him too. What about you, mate? Fair. Um, I'd go uh, maybe Daniel Rugani at Juve. Um, I think he's really composed in the ball. Loving the Serie A. Oh, loving the Serie A. Uh, yeah, I think he's very composed on the ball. He's had a serious education there alongside Chiellini and Barzagli and Bonucci, obviously, last season. Um, yes, that they've, they've got an incredible system, but I think he looks like the standout young defender in Syria. And then I've also got to stick in the Premier League as well. He gets a lot of criticism, and he's not had as good a season as 
Well, he had a very good th first three months of the season, I should say, but not such a good latter part of the season. But John Stones, I think, under Guardiola will develop really nicely. Mm. Um, good shout, I think yeah. he's got all the attributes to be a top ball playing defender. Uh, we need to get over these occasional defensive lapses because when you give someone that, that amount of responsibility and you tell them go and play, they're going to make occasional cock ups. Um, but I think there's uh, a lot, a lot of uh, promise in John Stones' future. Mm. For the here and now, I think it'll be sh England's leading centre back this uh, this summer. Sure. And uh, for the next eight years, can't wait to see how he develops. But anyway, let's go to midfielders. So midfield, I'd go Quarantine Tolisso maybe at Bayern. Uh, he scored some absolute worldies this yeah, year. Yeah, he stepped up so uh, well. Didn't really expect it after his move from Lyon to go straight into that midfield, but he's played really well alongside Thiago this year. He's creating one chance per 90. He's making three tackles and interceptions. Um, he plays a slightly deeper role uh, than he did at Lyon, but I think he looks really good. Mm. Po probably Dele Alli. I couldn't find a way to get him in my England side uh, about three weeks ago on Continental Club, but I mean, Cl uh, club level, he is absolutely brilliant. 69 goal contributions in his first 100 Premier League games. Outrageous. I think that's 15 more than Cristiano Ronaldo. Only Eden Hazard has as many, and that was at a latter uh, stage. He'd already won the league with Lille by then, so mm -hmm. had more kind of pedigree, top level experience. Uh, and Dele Alli, he's only 21. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I'll probably go Naby Keita, I think. I don't think he's had as quite good, as good a season this year as he did the previous that kind of uh, made Liverpool move for him. But I'm so excited to see him in the Premier League. Still 23 years of old. I think he's making over four tackles and interceptions a game, creating over 1.5 chances. He's just the all-round central midfielder. And I think that the Premier League will only improve him. I think playing at that level every single week will make him and take him to that next level. And I think Jurgen Klopp, I can't wait to see what Jurgen Klopp does with him. I think Jurgen Klopp will get the best out of a player like Naby Keita. So I would probably go Naby Keita. I think there's also maybe a shout. I'll get called biased in the comments, but I have to say, I think there is a shout for Paul Pogba. I think if you put Paul Pogba under the right manager and in the right team, I do genuinely think he could be one of the best midfielders, if mm. not the best in the world. 25, he's 25, so he's a little bit old maybe for this. But again, similar to David De Gea, I think if you could get six top years out of Paul Pogba in a Real Madrid side under a fantastic coach, I almost guarantee he would be incredible out of this world central midfield. He's got all the attributes and sure the natural talent. Best wears, I know, but he's, he's, he's at the end a little of the day. He's, he means this. He's not, he's so good. He's almost being wasted at Manchester United. You know, I actually hate saying that, but yeah. I just, right. I think he's worth it. Should we go to forwards no, then? I think we're all going to agree on a forward, aren't we? Just yeah. move on before you shed a tear. I know. <laughs> There's only one forward we're going to pick, though, isn't it, Mbappe, surely? We all yeah, maybe over. take him out of the equation because he's an absolute freak at 19, isn't he? Uh, I'd potentially go for, sorry, from Ste Stepan on toes here, Gabby Jesus or Timo Werner. Uh, I okay. think the Timo Werner's 22, mm. Jesus 21. Um, you could you could opt uh, on either of them. I think uh, Timo Werner, the youngest player ever to reach 150 Bundesliga appearances, and while he's not quite been in the same scintillating form as last season in his uh, top flight debut, where I think he scored over 20 league goals, uh, he has uh, around 10 at this point. Um, that has probably changed in recent weeks, haven't been keeping uh, both eyes on the Bundesliga. Um, but he's, he's creating more quality chances. I think more of his shots are coming from inside the box. And this is a, a sort of really nice evolution. He's kind of maturing in a, in a really nice way. I think he's producing more shots per game as well. I think he's taking four. I think that's up from around three last season. Um, so I, I think maybe keep one eye on, on his World Cup, not even his next season, because mm. uh, he could be forcing the the, the issue with a, a big bunny, uh, big money move soon. Sorry, and you know, uh, how old is Lewandowski now? Thirty years old. Thirty-one, I think. Yeah, probably on, oh, his, yeah. Probably on his way to buy it, <laughs> isn't he? So, what about you, boys? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, you can't look past Mbappe, obviously, but another name to throw in the hat is Marcus Rashford. I think um, massive future ahead of him. Scores a lot of crucial goals in big games. He's got a serious record against Man City and Liverpool, uh, amongst others. The only thing I worry about with Rashford is though, I think he will eventually be a, a centre forward. But with Lukaku there, who's what, what 24? Yeah. Uh, when is he going to get that opportunity to learn his trade there? I know it's I know it's a classic thing, getting minutes, getting and no one's played more games mm -hmm. for Man United under Mourinho than Marcus Rashford, uh, which sort of goes under the radar. But when will he get to learn his trade in his favourite position? I just don't see it happening anytime soon. I don't think he should move, but I think he's got a big future. Easy to forget he's 20 years old, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think you guys have pretty much selected the best strikers. Maybe I'll throw 
He's not really the spine of the team, but I actually think he would be better used, more advanced than Real Madrid would use him. But I think maybe Asensio. I think if you were to play Asensio kind of out on the wing, uh, as maybe even more of an inside forward, on the, <coughs> I think Asensio would probably be up there for me. I think he's got all the natural yeah. talent to be an absolute blockbuster player. And if he wasn't in a side with Ronaldo, Bale, Benzema, Isco, uh, and all of the rest of the side, I think you, you would be saying he's, he's probably the best young forward in the world alongside Mbappe. Almost held hands there a little we bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you could see his numbers going supernova, couldn't you, if you, yeah. got, if you got minutes. So I would go essentially. But who would you go for in the spine of your side over the next eight years? Let us know in the comments below. Before we go to our next question, then, it is hot takes time where this week, Doogie has taken on your worst opinions. Let's roll the VT. Hello and welcome back to Hot Takes. I'm in the hot seat this week listening to your stupid opinions. Thank you so much for contributing so many on Twitter. There were lots of stupid ones, but we picked out the best. The first one comes from at Tawana Muchaka. What a fantastic name. Thank you, Tawana. He says Klopp is overrated. Been in the job for three years and hasn't sorted out the goalkeeping situation. Look, I see what you mean, Tawana. I think he gets an easy ride from the media at times. He's actually got a 49.8% winning percentage, which is the eighth best of all Liverpool managers since the Premier League began. But look at the progress they've made under him. In the season that before he joined, they were sixth. In his first season, when they were still adapting to his methods, they finished eighth. They then finished fourth last year, and they're currently third. And they're also in their first Champions League quarterfinal for nine years. There's clear signs of progress. Yes, it's not ideal. They do need a new goalkeeper, but I'm pretty sure he'll go for one this year. I think they need a title-winning right back, another centre back. But never fear, people. Naby Keita is arriving in the summer, and he can sort out any problem. Right, number two comes from Ali Abdu, 383, series of numbers, can't be bothered. Glenn Murray is the third best English striker right now, but you've been listening far too much to Zach and McCubbin. He's having a good season, don't get me wrong, 11 goals in 28 games. That's pretty good, especially in a Brighton side that don't score a lot. But come on, for Glenn Murray, it's a freak season. He's only scored over 10 Premier League goals on one occasion, and he's actually only done it seven times in his entire 23-year career. And considering he's played in America, uh, the Conference, League Two, League One, the Championship and the Premier League, that is pretty shocking. But the third best uh, centre forward in England right now, you must be laughing. Right, the third one comes from Scott Young underscore four. Thanks for getting in touch, Scott. He says, Kante is overrated. He isn't even the top five DMs in the world. Never mind the top seven players in the world like he was voted. I assume that was in the, uh, the Ballon d'Or rankings. But I tend to agree with you. He is slightly overrated in my opinion. Uh, look, he played a crucial role in both Leicester and Chelsea's title winning uh, seasons. But the top seven in the world, Kante, not for me. At one stage, it seemed like he could shit gold, according to most pundits in England. He averages 4.7 tackles and interceptions uh, per game, per 90, sorry, this season. And that's very impressive. But that is playing in an ultra-defensive Chelsea team. And it's not all about statistics. They can sometimes be misleading. And a case in point is Wilfred Ndidi. He's 21 years old. He's in his first full season at Leicester. And he's doing 4.5 tackles and interceptions per 90, which to me seems to suggest that in a team set up to counter-attack and sit deep, for a defensive midfielder, it's way easier to get your stats as tackles and interceptions much higher than they would normally be. I think he's a good player, but top five in the world, not for me. Um, the MLS will be one of the most attractive leagues in the world in the next 10 years. What a load of bullshit. Right, the next one comes from at Rory Topia 12 and he says, Ronaldinho in his prime was better than Messi uh, is currently. Uh, and Rory, I'm, I'm a massive Ronaldinho fan. Him along with Henri was one of the main reasons I got into football. Um, he had incredible skills, f tricks, flicks, and scored some incredible goals. Who can forget those, that mazy run against Real Madrid or that goal against Chelsea in the UCL. Uh, he won a World Cup, he won a Champions League, he won two La Ligas, he won the Scudetto, he won two Ballon d'Ors. But even in his peak, uh, which I would argue were his Barcelona years, he scored 70 goals in 145 La Liga games. Never more than 26 goals in a single season, in all competitions. Right, forget about the trophies. Messi has never scored less than 26 goals in a season uh, since he was 21 in 2007-8. That just shows how much of golf and in class it is. I think Messi's the best passer we've ever seen. He's the best dribbler we've ever seen. Was he Messi's level consistently? Not for me. He also had an awful training, uh, training ground attitude, apparently. Apparently he enjoyed partying more than playing at times. He didn't look after his body properly. Fantastic player, but better than Messi. What are you smoking, Rory? At Swagato Saka 99 says, Sunderland will never come back to the top flight for at least another decade. I'll just piss off Swagato. 
Our next question comes from England 20, Australia 17. I hope that's a reference to the World Cup final. But anyway, he says, what is the pinnacle of your own sporting careers? <laughs> it doesn't have to be football. This was liked Our by a lot of people. Career, uh, who wants to question. kick us off? Dukes? Because uh, yeah, yours okay. is pretty impressive. I'll give it a go. Um, so, I, you know, I never really played football growing up. I was more of a rugby player. But last year, I did the marathon, actually, with my brother and sister. That's um, incredible. Did the London the Marathon, which was uh, horrible. Um, it was absolutely awful. I ran it with my sister. My brother was injured, so he was sort of hobbling behind. And my sister got really ill at 17 miles, ended up on a stretcher. Oh, um, what an inspiring story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she was actually fine. She got up and finished. Well done her. Shout out to uh, my sis. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a horrible, horrible day. I wouldn't re recommend marathon running. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Did but, you yeah, train? Was, sorry? Did you train? Yeah, you've got to train for about four or five months. Fuck that. Couldn't be uh, doing luckily it. Luckily, I was doing a course. I was, doing, I was still studying at the time, so I got yeah. plenty of time to do it. But yeah, if you're working, I wouldn't recommend it because you've got a lot of early mornings. What was your time? Late. What did you finish in? Did it in 3.44. That's pretty good. That's really good. 3.44 yeah. is mental. I wanted to 3.30, but we got a bit waylaid with the old stretch and things. So. Uh, People that yeah. break the four-hour barrier are like notoriously fit. Yeah, uh, I don't, know, don't know about that. It doesn't surprise me. The only one of the only players who finished the ninety against uh, uh, Soccer, uh, yes. Soccer, me and you both hobbled off with crap with crap both numerous cards. times by Paul Merson. But yeah, <laughs> no, you're not the only one. Um, sporting achievement. Wow. Uh, <laughs> things that I've done Where that could start? be passed <laughs> off as as sport. Did a. I've done a couple of long distance bike rides. Uh, so London to Paris at university. That was about 180 miles, I think. Did that in three days. That was tough on the old ass. <laughs> but one that I did prior to that with my mates just on a bit of a whim, we, we, we thought, okay, let's cycle to Snowdon from Leicester, which is, I think, roughly the same distance. Not sure. Could, could be massively overstating <laughs> that. Um, but we did minimal preparation. We were 17. I had a backpack that weighed about 30 kilograms full of like cans of beans, tins, like gas to cook said food on, a tent, uh, thinking I was, you know, a marine, clearly, <laughs> uh, which I jettisoned on the motorway about 20 miles into the journey because I was like, this isn't happening. Like, my shoulders are so sh yeah, shaking no as I'm cycling. Uh, Why yeah, didn't you just buy it as you went? It slept in the woods, and the second night we were like, I was staying in an Airbnb. Like, not yeah. an Airbnb, it's just, just an normal Do you have a thing. proper bike, or was it just you and your little mountain bike? Uh, no, so I had, a, I had a suspension bike. Really? So my knees have been shot to bits ever since. Like. Uh, it was it was called like the globe trotter i think my bike and it just had one of those like little yellow spring loaded coils on it and it was like every time i was just like cycling up that's that thick tires that thick tires yeah you tires. idiot <laughs> and then i remember turning up to the paris uh, uh bike ride on a similar sort of bike it was much better but it still had thick tires and this is the first time i realized you shouldn't do do long distance bike right. rides with thick tires i pulled up next to like one of the professionals who did the did the journey with us and he went so it's went you're going to struggle. And then just rode <laughs> off, and I was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, that is, that's horrible. What a dickhead. I thought it was personal. It took, took me a while to figure it out. Uh, what about you? Uh, mine is almost definitely one incident scoring at Old Trafford at the Stretford end. And it's a good goal. It's probably, that was genuinely, uh, I know it's like a charity match. That, that's the best 90 minutes of football I've ever played in my life. I was, um, was on top I was absolutely unbelievable. Should I don't know what happened to me. Oh, I just, mate, I just turned up. Work the next day. I just <laughs> turned up. It was like, I had, it was like Brian Robson on the opposition team. We, I was like playing central midfield. Brian Robson was playing central midfield. And it was like, we were just having a battle. It was absolutely unbelievable. Did, <laughs> did you get a challenge in on it? Captain, yeah, we, he, Captain he, he was obviously all over me. Far better than me, even though he's like 50. He's so fit. He's yeah. so fit. And... Uh, he was much better than me, but the that was the best was game nice I've ever though. played. I remember you took it, you, you like rolled your right foot over it. Ro it two it two ball rolls. We'll put it on screen now yeah. if we can get hold of it. <laughs> but <laughs> slotted at the outside of my boot. But yeah, midfield battle against Brian Robson. Then Brian Robson and uh, Pallister give me the man of the match. So that was the best player on the pitch. I had people coming up to me and I had to go, what level do you play at? I was, <laughs> like, I was like, on the Sunday, mate. I didn't even play Happy Sunday. Days. That was the best game of football I've ever played at yeah. Old Trafford. So. That's quality. Any of the random ones? Um, no, not think. really. I'm, I'm a think qualified scuba diver. Really? That's good, Which scuba. I attained when I was about 16. Did a few dives in, in England, which is horrible because it's freezing and murky. And uh, I've, I've never been since. What about when we did... I, could you count the bungee jump? I reckon extreme sports. I reckon Ooh. that's up there, you know. Bungee jump in a forest in Russia. I once, um, I once scored a cricket 50 against a team of monks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The final question of the day was sent in by Arvind Mohan on Twitter. If you want to be involved next week, hit us up on these three handles. He says, if Real Madrid win the Champions League this very year, should Zidane be considered one of the best managers of all time? As he will have won more Champions Leagues than Ferguson and Guardiola and Mourinho. It started to get really hard to sort of dispute... Real Madrid's fans claims that Zidane is a top, top manager. I think quite a lot of us are comfortable with labelling him as a great coach, great with the players, mm. uh, great at sort of um, building a good rapport with them, uh, which is, you know, been the downfall of multiple Real Madrid mm. managers. A look at his uh, predecessor, Rafa Benitez, win percentage of 68%, but uh, he got battered by uh, Barca, and that was enough uh, to sort well, of. I seem to remember, sorry, I seem to remember Benitez refused to acknowledge that uh, Ronaldo was even the best player at Real Madrid, let alone the world. So instantly from that moment, gone. They didn't um, like that. Never make Zidane your assistant, either. If he did do yeah, that, then I think, I think that's he a definitely disaster. promoted him. I think it might have been Castilla. Because that, sure assistant, I remember but. speaking to people at Liverpool, and they were saying that that's one of the reasons that um, Steven Gerrard never got made assistant manager at Liverpool. Because if you make a player like what, Steven Gerrard, yeah, yeah, then it's then it's yeah, your yeah. ass. You're basically signing your own death warrant, yeah, full yeah, bad yeah, games, yeah. and everybody's going, give it to Gerrard, <laughs> which is a disaster. Yeah, agreed. But I mean, since 2016, Zidane has won eight trophies, including two Champions Leagues. Uh, He's already the third most successful manager at Real Madrid and holds Fuck. the longest unbeaten streak in history with 40 matches. I think he's Nobody's the ever second done it, yeah. manager to do two out of two. Right, yeah. But, um, but it's even doing three in his first three, even two in his first two seasons, he's absolutely mental. It's, it's crazy, especially when they're accompanied by the league. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't think he's the greatest of all time or even in the greatest of all time. But maybe the more interesting question is, who's better than him? Who would who would go to Madrid and be better than him? I think Pep would go to Madrid, and I think Pep's a better coach. I think he's a better manager. I think he's the best in the world than Zidane. I don't think there's that many others. But people say, oh, they should have po people say they should have Pochettino at Madrid. Pochettino at the moment isn't even in the same league. You could argue well, in terms of successfulness. He's won a title exactly. Well, Zidane's won yes yeah, seven in 19 months, and he's the quickest manager to ever do that. I think that Zidane's, I've got a little line for you lads, I think Zidane's achievements will be legendary. But I don't think you can call him a legend yet. Because he's got that incredible squad. In managerial terms. In managerial yeah. terms. I, he's got that incredible squad to work with. He's got a freak player. Uh, in the same way that I don't think you could call Luis Enrique a top, top manager, despite winning a treble. Uh, when you've got the one of Messi or Ronaldo under your control and numerous other star-studded players throughout that squad, I don't think you can call them a legend until they prove themselves at another club. I know what. But more Carlo we wasn't winning three Champions Leagues in a row at Real Madrid. But then I wouldn't call him an elite, elite manager. Oh come on, he's won three Champions Leagues. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. <coughs> you, you Maybe look, not. Look in recent years, there's definitely been a downturn in his results. Maybe not um, so much now, yeah. But, but um, I mean, is he the guy for Real Madrid? As in, yeah, he's winning Champions there's Leagues. There's better tacticians, but I, as in, he might not do as well at Chelsea, but. Um, is he exactly what Real Madrid mean is, is, is more what I'm getting at here. So yeah. there might be better uh, tacticians, there might be uh, better uh, coaches in, in terms of developing youngsters. So you've got Allegri, master tactician, Pep Guardiola, brilliant at developing young talent. But if massaging egos and, man and, management, uh, yeah, yeah. and putting to, uh, together a, a strong uh, dressing room and, and sort of placating Perez by occasionally balancing the books is what it takes to succeed at Real Madrid, then is there anyone better at the moment for Los Blancos? And no. understanding the psyche of an elite player, <coughs> having been that good yourself and having knowing Real Madrid inside out. I think he is he is a very good fit, but I just don't think you can call him an elite manager until you see it over over you know five, six years, until you see it in another club. I don't would Zidane win the league with Liverpool or uh would but you he... could say the same of Pep. Pep's done it only at massive clubs. He's done it at Bayern Munich. He never won a Champions yeah, League at Bayern Munich. Never got to a Champions League final at Bayern Munich. Not going to get to a Champions League final this year. After he's left Barcelona, he hasn't got past the semi-final. This is. I would say <coughs> he's still the best manager in the he's world. He's transformed though. City so much in the, in the two years. Mm. That he's yeah, been. but Pellegrini, Pellegrini won has, a, Zidane, won. has Zidane transformed Real Madrid? I don't think so. Well, you could say yes because they've won two mm. Champions Leagues on the bounce. And also the players that he's brought in. 
It's a lot of the players. So he brought in Teo Hernandez last summer. He brought in Danny Caballos last summer. Neither of them have really played. He's working with the tools he's already got. And I think he's excellent man in management. And I think he sets up the team really well. Mm. And this 4-3-1-2 uh, that he's playing yeah. works very well in the Champions League. The point League, you but. raised earlier, yes, he, he has got Ronaldo. And Ronaldo is posting freakish results. I think he's now, after a very slow start to the season, the top goal scorer in Europe's top five. But he has had to help Ronaldo evolve. He deserves a lot of credit mm. for that. He's not had Ronaldo at his sort of peak. 25, Ronaldo is scoring 50 goals a season. Yeah. Yeah. He uses his uh, resources three, very well. Three, four years ago. I, uh, and what I was getting at earlier, so I don't think that, it's, it's easy to name better managers um, with better attributes, like Klopp, exactly, Pep, uh, Allegri, who I mentioned earlier, even, even Pochettino. Conte, Pochettino probably, but it's harder to think of a better fit for Real Madrid. Yeah, I think his, his playing career demands so much respect within that team that it's almost like you can't question me. Yeah. You can't question me as to what you should be doing in that role because I was better in that role than you are. But I think you, still it, you hear stories <laughs> of him taking part in training sessions and still being one of the best players. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think he is helping to, to change that star study culture. He's not exactly adopted the Galacticos policy, has he? He's by signing Teo Nandes, by signing Chabas, uh, it's almost like <clears throat> Maybe he's just slowly, bit by bit, like I said, changing the culture at the club. Gareth Bale has, has barely played uh, of late and he's yeah. being sold. He sold Alvaro Morata for £70 million. Pepe. Yeah. Big sale Pepe was. Um, like People underrate yeah, that. Yeah, just giving the faith in, straight into Varane's hands. I know yeah, Varane was an exceptional young test. player. Probably one we should have mentioned in the spine of the team, given that he <laughs> yeah, is true. almost definitely but, in the top five youngsters. Yeah, but maybe by doing so, it's been to his detriment in the short term because he hasn't had as strong a squad to compete on multiple fronts, but it also maybe makes the players feel like they have less power and it creates a more harmonious environment. Yeah, you might be right. But what do you guys think? We're going to throw it up to a poll. Is Zidane oh. one of the greatest of all time? Our kind of resounding thing is no, not no. yet. Well, you're, you guys are closer on the yes, I'm, I'm saying Closer, no. I'm closer, but uh, I don't think if yet. If he wins a third one. Oh, there's, yeah. a lot, there's a, a lot, lot riding on that third. That. third. So, but anyway, vote in the poll up there. Intriguing poll. Uh, that's pretty much the end of the show. So that's the end of Sunday Vibes. What else is happening on the FD Families pages? Um, so why don't you go check out Friday's VFN. There'll be a top 10 from Saturday. And go over to 90 plus 1 as well. Uh, Kieran's dropped a new comment show this week. It's very funny once again. Hamster, Goa out? Uh, Goa, potentially <laughs> out. When would this have gone out? Yeah, yesterday on FD. If Fingers I, crossed. If I can get it finished. But uh, that happened. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye.